Hi there. Today we have a, it's a very exciting section we're going to go through here. Quite a bit of stuff, so just hang on with me here. We're in Luke chapter 22, verses 41 through 46. And it says, And he, Jesus, was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw away. And he knelt down and prayed. So you got to get this picture. Uh, you got to put all the Gospels together to kind of understand what's going on here. And we see that Jesus, um, this is just after the, the, the Last Supper, they go up to the Garden of Gethsemane. And as, as they get there, Jesus puts the 11 disciples, he says, hey, stay here, guys. Oh, and Peter, James, John, come with me. And so he takes them a little further. And then he says to them, hey guys, stay here, but watch and pray. Stay with me. This is important. And then Jesus himself goes by himself and goes off a little ways further and prays by himself. Important thing in Jesus' ministry. It tells us earlier in Luke, Luke chapter 5 tells us he, Jesus, often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. This was a key part of Jesus' life. And if it's so important to Jesus, it should be pretty important to us. And that's the big focus of this section here. Uh, um, so he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. This is a key prayer. Uh, um, two main points that I see about this prayer, and I know there's probably, probably many, many, but two main points that I'm going to focus on today is, first off, um, what Jesus is talking about. He's, as we see in the other Gospels, he prays the same prayer three times. And the two main points is, one, he always ends it, not my will, but yours be done. And that needs to be a key focus in our prayers. We're not trying to make God do things in prayer. We're not trying to provide a, um, a Christmas list to the big guy in the sky, you know. That's not what prayer is. But prayer is our chance to get our heart and express it to God. Be truthful in your prayers. Don't try and make it flowery and whatever. Be truthful and be honest to God. What's on your heart? But the big thing is, truly, if He is our Lord, our Kyrios, our, our Adonai, then truly, we need to let His will be done. And that's what we need to really seek, because He honestly has a good will for, a good plan for your life. And really, we want that to happen. So the two things there is His will to be done, but the other thing is, Jesus prayed this prayer because he was talking about his own death. He knew it was going to happen. And he's saying, God, Father, if there's any other way that all these sinful, dirty, rotten people could be saved, please let that be. You know, if they could just rub, rub some big guy's tummy, you know, and that would be enough. Hey, let's do that. If they could you know, ride a bike for 20,000 miles and, and, you know, do all these different stuff then please, Dad, let that be. But if there's no other way, then I'm willing to go to the cross just like your plan is. And the obvious answer is, there is no other way. There is nothing you can do. There is nothing I can do to get our sinful rears to heaven. It's all about Jesus. He did it all on the cross. He completed it all. And there's nothing else that needs to be done. We just need to accept it. Accept what he has done. So, let's continue on here. Verse 43, Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. This is The Gospel of Luke is the only gospel that records this. He needed an angel. And sometimes we need extra strength from the Lord. And he will send angels to help us, to give us strength. Verse 44, And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became great drops of blood falling down to the ground. This is a, an actual technical um, medical condition where the capillaries can, because of great pressure or great strain, great crushing, they can burst and they can mix. The blood mixes with 
the sweat and comes out in a liquidy type watery form. It's really kind of icky, but it's a very real condition. Now, if you remember where Jesus and his disciples are at, they went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And truly, there was a, an olive grove right there. There still is today. And when they would harvest the olives, they would immediately press them. They would put them in this olive press. And they would take this huge stone and roll it over the olives. And it would crush the olives. The force and the pressure would crush them as it rolls over them with all of its weight. And that stone is known as the Gethsemane stone. And that's why they call this the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus, on this night, he was under such crushing pressure because he knew what was coming. He knew the physical torture that he was going to be under. But he also knew there was going to be several things that he had never experienced. He knew that he was sinless, but the sin of the entire world was going to come upon him. He would become sin for us. Important. And then his father would turn his back on him as his father poured all of the wrath of God on Jesus Christ in your place and in my place. Jesus knew all these things were coming upon him. It was crushing him. And so he prayed earnestly. He cried out to God. And that needs to be our prayer. Prayer can be a corporate thing, and that's great. But a big part of our prayer life needs to be private, in private, not before anyone else, just before you and God, as you are agonizing and crying out to God, stressing and pressure, just crying and laying your heart out to God. That is an important thing with your prayer life. And then this section ends, uh, um, when he rose up from prayer, he found his disciples, he, uh, he, came, he rose and came to his disciples, and he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Again, temptation is brought up, and the answer is prayer. And it's not flowery, big, fancy prayer. It's agonizing and crying out to your Father who loves you, who wants to hear your heart. He wants to share. He wants to comfort you. He wants to give you strength. He wants to send angels to help you. He wants to answer your prayers. Let Him know what's going on in your heart today. Cry out to Him. Humble yourself. You can't do it on your own. We need God. Thank you very much and God bless. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'm so glad I caught you. Hey, if you're liking what you're seeing here, be sure to subscribe. Click the bell so that you can get notifications. Thank you very much. Have a good one.